Okay, so we are going to continue our look at the star seeds, and today we are at Sirius. So worker one is my uh, random word and number. Now Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. It is in Orion's belt, and as far as uh, our galaxy goes, it's one of the closest stars to Earth at a little over eight light years away. It's like eight and a half or something like that. So it's pretty close, right? And if a civilization or something was able to develop interstellar travel, Sirius is basically one of our neighbors. Um, it's closer than Lyra, even. Um, anyway... So, let's look at Sirius. We're looking at the star seeds. And let's see what the deal is. So, we get a four of wands over a page of wands. Now, one of the things I'm going to say is so far in the star seed series, in the main two cards, there's been a court card in all of them. And I've been open in every one of these to the reading basically saying, like, no, there aren't any. But because there's been a court card in each one of them, um, to me, that says that there are. So, again, serious star seeds looks like it is a thing. Now, the four of wands over the top of the page. So the page is the creative little kid, and the page of wands is also very unorthodox. Um, now that I'm looking at this, I do get kind of the use of tools or technology as he's using, you know, the sticks to cross the icy pond, but the page of wands does things unlike other people, like anyone else would see this kid, you know, walking on ice with sticks and say, that's not going to work. But as long as the page believes in themselves, it will work, you know? So we have these unusual skills in unusual vision, we'll say. Um, now, <clears throat> here that is the basis, and over the top of that is a four of wands. Now, generally, the four of wands is about commitment. Um, shared commitment to stability. Let's just see what's around the four to see what we got going on here. Well, there's the devil. And the queen of wands. Now, actually, I think the queen of wands has also shown up in every single one of the starseed readings so far. Um, and the devil has shown up, I think, in two of them. But... So here we have this commitment between the devil. Now, I basically am going to read the devil. After all of the alien readings that we've done, I'm reading the devil as kind of an alien agenda, right? So whatever the people of Sirius, what is right for them? would show up as the devil. And on the other side is the Queen of Wands, and the Queen of Wands is very charming, very beautiful. It's um, it's interesting that we do have two of the Wands family underneath another Wands card, but these Wands cards are pretty common so far in the Starseed readings. And the Wands cards show people who are very passionate and um, also very inspiring. And the Queen of Wands is also, she's like very gracious and like as she moves through the room, sort of everyone is like, oh my God, you know, I hope she comes over and talks to me. Um, she's also, as a queen, now this is very, she's very receptive. Uh, so we have this commitment between what I'm basically reading as the agenda of the home world 
and ha, huh, just sort of being someone who will allow people to bask in her glory. I mean, this is kind of Leo-ish, you know? This is kind of like Leo energy and just sort of wanting to be fawned over and all of that. Now, somehow, these two things together um, create stability, theoretically. Now, I want to look more at the devil because how does the devil fit into this? So what is it that mixes with the Queen of Wands specifically to create stability? Huh. So a Two of Cups. What is coming out here? I mean, really, to me, the thing that's coming out are the little lights on the ends of the hair of the woman and the two. But the Two of Cups at its base is, again, we have these two figures like we have here, and they're very open to each other. This is in a moment, just being open to whatever is going on. Hmm. Okay. This is, to me, this is actually less clear than the other star seed reading so far, so I guess I'm just going to start asking more specific questions. Um... And the first question is going to be, how would you know? Like, are there any identifying marks or anything like that of being a starseed from Sirius? And here we got two that want to come out. The Emperor and the Three of Wands. Okay. Well... I'm guessing the Emperor would talk about kind of a commanding type energy. Huh. And again, we this showed up in one of the other readings. I don't remember which one. But we've got the Emperor, and his foot is on that bull, that red devil creature, which is very much similar to the devil. Okay. <clears throat> Now, this might just be the ability to sort of control your own inner devil, you know, to control your emotions and that sort of thing. What do we get as we look deeper? I'm kind of seeing the feet. I mean, maybe there's something weird about the feet of people from there, but... Uh, the Emperor, I guess this would be kind of a commanding sort of presence. And the Three of Wands, as far as something identifying, I'm seeing the stomach and the umbilical cord coming out. So if there's a marking, this might be a marking around the navel or in this general area. Now, I guess a question that, and I didn't ask this on the other ones, but specifically, why would there be a marking around the stomach? If there's a marking around the stomach, it means, it would have to mean that just like this, there's some energy being drawn from it. So, uh, why would there be a marking around the stomach? And again, we have two, two freaking court cards. We got almost the whole Wands family out now, with the Knight of Wands and the Queen of Swords. Hmm. So we've got the impulsive journey here, and the Queen of Swords normally about anxiety and that sort of thing. Huh. Unclear. I'm going to mark that up as unclear. So this is this is kind of jumbled. And I think this this makes sense in all of the starseed readings because no matter where you're from, it's not like the people from Earth are all the same. You know what I mean? So it's like why would there really be any uh prototype or archetype maybe of people that came from a specific system? Um but what, where would the energy be coming from? Or, like, what would the mark on the stomach be? 
I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. So, do the star seeds from Sirius, do they have some sort of mission? And this would be like a common mission. Here it would show in the devil. And this would probably be the homeworld agenda. But let's just see if there is uh, kind of a mission for the star seeds from Sirius. Again, we have two that want to come out. The sun that showed up in one of the other star seed readings, too. And the reversed seven of cups. So the sun, if we take it at the face value of the card, then the sun is about freedom and acceptance and openness and joy, right? This is kind of being exactly who you are and not giving a fuck. And a reversed seven of cups, this is kind of like... So the seven would be really getting deeply in touch with your emotions and sort of using that in some creative way. Usually when the seven is reversed, this shows more of a practical nuts and bolts approach. So if you put these together, this is like openly talking about the brass tacks, as they say, like cutting to the heart of the matter and just not hiding behind any stupid societal norms and just speaking truth. Um, we could use a bunch of that. Looking at that, we could use a shitload of serious star seeds. Okay, now, with these folks, are they allowed to go home? You know, it, once they run through this Earth mission, are they allowed to go home? Or are they kind of stuck? And it's the hangman, so they are stuck as well. Now, this seems to be common, not just through the star seeds, but also through the aliens themselves. Aliens, angels, demons, like whatever you want to call these other beings, uh, they are stuck here just like we are. And the way that it seems to have been showing up is like, Earth is the site of a galactic proxy war, and this is, these are like soldiers that are being deployed. And it's like, you've got to go there, you've got to do this shit, you know? Now, I guess the question that I have is, in doing this, this here seems pretty helpful. This is like openly speaking about practical truth, right? So is that in, is it in the best interests of the humans, you know, the people of Earth? Um, or is this just one more thing that kind of adds to chaos? So the death card comes out, and to me this is saying I mean, is it good for the people of Earth? It is when we need renewal. It is when we need change and rebirth. When it's time for something new to be born and something old to be sacrificed. And uh, I think, like, modern day definitely falls into this. So... I'm trying to think of other ways that I can hit this from, but it looks like, just like all of the other star seeds, they're kind of stuck here, and it is happening at a time of like renewal and change. Oh, here's here's a question, and I didn't ask this on the other ones either, but is this an increasing number? Are the number of star seeds increasing, or is it just kind of the same that it has always been? So, is the number getting bigger? And we get a reversed eight of, of wands. Now, this is kind of loaded. The short answer to this is no. But in the eight of wands, 
So there's all this energy that's been growing and growing and growing, and here she's just about to chop it all down. So this would be quick-moving energy. This would be like a whole shitload of star seeds showing up at the same time. Now, when this thing is upside down, she's hesitating. So is the number getting bigger? This would say no, but eventually this is going to turn around, and it probably will. Right, so when she chops that down, then there's going to be a whole bunch of star seeds from Sirius. Now, uh, because I haven't clearly defined, oh God, um, any of the the enemies, so I'm just trying to find out if there is a force that they are kind of against that is really, really bad. Um, if you are a star seed from Sirius, this would be your El Guapo. That's a Three Amigos reference. But it would be the, the thing, the one thing that you have to fight, the big scary monster. And we get a reversed Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands we have kind of emerging from a restrictive area. So it looks like the worst thing that could happen for a serious star seed, and the thing that they're trying to uh, deflect or beat back is basically getting trapped, right? So the person finally emerges after they've been stuck in this forest for so long, and here when this thing turns upside down, it's like once they finally get this far, they got, kind of get freaked out and they turn back around. So going backwards would be the worst thing um, for a person, a star seed from Sirius. So I guess in the world, like in our civilization, if we seem to go backward, they would be here to keep that from happening. Um, so that's what we get. This is all interesting stuff, and it really is interesting to see the, the repeating cards that happen. The devil has been all over these things, and so has the Wands family. And that also kind of leads me to believe that the star seeds, they might be kind of mixed, you know? They might be kind of mixed up. So if a spirit maybe is from the Pleiades, they probably have spent a bunch of time on the Sirius worlds as well, and maybe the Vega worlds also. So there, there's a lot of intermingling in these spirits from other stars. Um, but that's what we get for now. If you have any other ideas on these cards, feel free to let me know. Or any other um, angles that you would like me to look at this from. And peace.